Hey, welcome back to Fearless Mechanics. And today, as you might see, we're fixing a automatic shifter. Now, the only reason we're fixing this shifter is because when the car is on, well, car is on, you want to take it out of park, the shifter does not move. Now, in order for it to even move, you would have to push down the shift lock and then it will move. Now, the mechanism good. somewhere in here is broke. So we're going to have a different shifter in the rear, which I'm going to replace today. And I don't know if there's been a lot of people that actually fix one of these on YouTube. Haven't really seen a lot of videos that's in depth. Um, but I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish. Now, the first thing you will going to have to do is have a couple of tools. Now, I've already took another shifter out of another car, so I already know how to remove this shifter itself. Now, what you're going to need is you're going to need a 5 8 or a, a quarter inch drive with a 10 millimeter. You're going to need to get this piece off right here, so you're going to need either... If you don't want to mess it up, you can use like something flat and get up under the edge, or you can use a flathead. Um, to me, I don't really care about the way the way the edges look. I mean, it's just just interior parts. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna go up under there, and just gonna slightly pull, and now it's off. Um, all you're gonna do from there, you're gonna pull it up just a little bit. Make sure it's actually off of there. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to pull this down. There is a little, I'm show you in a sec after I get it off. Um, there is a little tab that is right around the center of the, um, the plastic piece under the shifter. Uh, you're going to have to take that off in order to slip the shifter off. Now put this in a good place because if you lose this, this will not stay on there. All right, so second thing is, is you might want to go ahead and throw it into neutral with your foot on the brake for this um, to take the, um, the shifter mechanism off uh, the plastic piece. Of course, this is the, the issue that was being said before, and this just proves our point that this thing's a pain in the butt, and that's why we're switching it out. Yep. Um... Because having to sh uh, press the shift lock every time um, you do something, like if you want to go just to go and get something to eat, I have to worry about pressing that shift lock every single time. Now, that's up and out. Lay that to the side. Um, now we're to the shifter. Throw it back in park. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, like you can, it will pull out of park. If that shift lock, did, hold on, oh, there we go. All right, so it's in place, it's locked in. So I could take take off and take out the key. But, you know, if I wasn't able to do that, now it's it's locked in place. I thought, I thought I'd fix it there for a second, but. <laughs> <laughs> we, we still switch it out anyways. Yeah, um, but see, you see it, it um, I don't know the exact, uh, word for it, but it sticks and then when you press it up a little bit It will actually shift up and unlock the uh, key to come out of the ignition um, That's the main reason I'm switching it out because you have to press the shift lock down here in order just to pull it out of park um, Like like he just did you know he just press it a little bit and that's 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 another annoying thing because if you put it in park and you think you can pull the key out and the key just sticks in there like what the hell is going on you have to push the shifter up a little bit in order just to get the key out so um another thing you got to do is you got to take this screw and this screw out um the two separate screws are for these side panels and i'm gonna show you how to remove them in one second take this screw out Get in here. That was almost good. That's that just something in your back seat. Alright, so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pull up, pull over, and pull out. And 
and these should come out. Now, there's little clips on the back here that these actually hold into the side of the radio. So if you happen to lose one of these, it might not stick as well as it used to to the side of the um, side of the radio. You might have to move one if you, you know, accidentally drop one, but from this point, they should not drop out of here unless you pull them out. Um, go ahead and lay this down there. All right, so now we're looking at the shifter. Now, with the shifter mechanism, you have two more different screws. You have a screw up here, you have a screw over here, and you have four bolts that bolt the shifter in under here. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and take this off first. Um, the reason being is because the screws under here, I would have to um, pull this out of place in order just to get to them. Um, like I said, if you have a 5 8 or well not a 5 8 but a 3 8 drive or a quarter inch drive, you could actually get a longer extension and just reach in there and grab them. Um, but me personally, I'm going to make stuff easier on me, make stuff easier on all of us. Um, and all these um, screws that I'm taking out of the top are all uh, Phillip heads. So make sure you have a flat head and a Phillip head just laying around if you want to do a shifter replacement. Now it's also good um, if you want to just go ahead and move this whole um, whole thing out of place I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take the four bolts out like I said they should just just pop right out right up. yeah Now, I wouldn't advise um, unscrewing them all the way without a magnet. Now, after you get all these bolts out, there is one last bolt that you're going to have to get to, and that is on the side of the transmission under the car, which is going to be the hardest bolt you're ever going to have to encounter while doing this swap. Now, the only reason why I say it's going to be the hardest one is because you have to lift up the car just enough so you can get to the transmission. Make sure you don't drop none of these bolts. If you're going to do exactly what I'm doing, make sure you do not drop these bolts. Yeah, you, okay. You drop a bolt, that's a, especially in this situation, that's a nightmare waiting to happen. Especially if you don't have a magnet. Alright, so, now we've come to the part where it will actually move. Now, next thing you're going to have to do in order to um, actually take this shifter out is there is a shifter linkage that is in here that you're going to have to pull out from the side of the shifter, in which that is when you're pulling it out. But I'm going to go ahead and pull mine out now since I already know that I'm going to have to do it later. So why, why do it later when I can just do it now? That's that. Uh, you pull it up and you just slide it over. Yeah, and it's out. All right, so now that the shifter is completely disconnected from the car, uh, you have a wiring harness back here that is connected that actually um, shows that you are switching from park, reverse, neutral, drive. Yep. Standard um, mode. Not only that, but the transmission actually helps that too. Uh, but that wiring harness is what is messing up my manual mode. But we will worry about that wiring harness at the end. Um, other than that, we're going to have to get up under the car and get that one bolt from the transmission out. And I think I have a better idea than doing it in the garage. Because we have no room. You want to back her out? Yeah, I'm going to back it out. All right, well, let's back her out. Now, I wouldn't advise. Uh, yeah, I would not advise doing this, guys. This is... This is probably not the smartest thing we're going to do all day, but uh, yeah, we're going to back this thing out right now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is show y'all where the bolt is on the transmission. All right, so there is two screws in order to take this console out. They're on the side right there near the seat. Um, they're actually 
one over here and one over here. Roll the seat up a little bit. The shenanigans again. Now there is a screw over here. <laughs> take the screwdriver and take that screw out. All right, so there is two screws on the oh, side. Get that out of your car. On the side of the um, console, they are actually Phillip head. So all you gotta do is take a Phillip head, unscrew both of them at the sides, and that's the only thing holding in the console. So you just easily take the console up in and out. You sit you're, it you're down. The the oh, this is what I was talking about right here. You have this piece which hooks into the side of, you know. It hooks into the side of this right here. It actually goes into the side of this. All right, so with that not being hooked up, hooks into the shift lever. The actual um, ignition won't let your key get out unless you push, you pull this back a little bit, engaging the shift lock. In which, as you see, is not coming out of park unless I actually push. The shift lock down and then pull it out of park right now i'm actually going to show y'all how to unhook this wiring harness in case you want to go ahead and do it now um let's see there is a button on the left side over here you push it the front of that wiring harness comes by the way, this is going to be sketchy because I don't know where my, where I have little, little locks that I can put under the wheels to keep the car from moving because his e-brake doesn't work. And, I got you uh, covered. Hold on. His e-brake doesn't work. So we're going to put this under the car. We're probably going to lean back and tear him out. Um, that'll help us afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. You might need a couple of these to lift up the sides. Yeah. After you use a jack, do not try to lift your car up with one of these. It does not work. Yeah, look at my beautiful car. It's sitting there. All broken and busted. Hey, Bobby. Hey! <laughs> I love you and all, but you can't, you can't be doing that, man. Don't be doing those sketchy shit. <laughs> Okay. I see where I can lift it. Hey, you remember Halloween? Yeah. You still, you still have stuff under there from Halloween, dude. Oh, hi. Please. There you go. Jack it up and always pray to the car gods before you do it. You don't die. This is probably gonna be the back. I see it going already. Yeah, make sure you have your car in parking your e-brake on. Thankfully, my car has no e-brake. Thankfully? <laughs> is it because you always like to make things interesting? <laughs> All right, so now that the car is completely secure, sure, somewhat, um, <laughs> we're going to now get up under the car and take off that one bolt. What is that stuck under my car? I, I don't know. I'm what the fuck? <laughs> oh, guys, wait until you see this shit. Now, <laughs> look at this, guys. <laughs> I don't know what he hit, but whatever that is, is just fucking disgusting. Bobby, what did you hit, dude? <laughs> it looks like Wendy's. <laughs> oh my god.
God. That's just wonderful. That's Oh, it smells horrendous. Blech. Oh, oh. Get that off the car. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm getting up under here right now. Here's that Y pipe we we're talking about. You have the Y pipe going straight back to our janky exhaust. Now, as for the bolt he's talking about, um. I'm actually going to try to get the camera from you to show the yeah. people. All right, here we go. I'm switching over to Bobby so he can show you. All right, so you'll see this one bolt, and it is connected to the side of the transmission. Now, like I said, that there is a lever going all the way up into the, the, the um, cockpit of the car. Now, this bolt, uh, I will figure out in a second what millimeter it is. It looks like a 16. Yeah, so um, once you get everything from the inside done, because the inside is sitting right there, uh, it drops down. You'll see this right here. I can push it up. Um, that is the shifter boot that is sitting right there. Um, this actually goes all the way down. It goes all the way. And then it comes down and it goes right here now once you have this bolt off you will pull this from the side of the transmission and you will pull it out from right there all right hello hey hey don't 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 slip don't slip now you're I'm, a cameraman for right now what are you talking about i didn't slip on anything okay cool all right yeah. close call <laughs> but luckily enough i didn't slip on anything why are we going in the trunk? Get my shifter. Leave this trunk. Leave this trunk. No, no, don't, 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 don't look the mess. Don't oh. test by the mess. Everyone judge it. <laughs> All right, so this is the other shifter. All right, so I'm a mechanic, so there's going to be a lot of mechanic stuff, stuff in the trunk. Open. So show them what you just disconnected. All right, so you have this, this slanted opening, which is going to sit on the side of the transmission. Now, that's where the bolt that we just took off goes. Now, this is what I was talking about in the car. You're gonna have to pull this out from the inside of the cockpit. You're gonna have to put this back though. With the, if you're changing out the shifter, this is gonna go with the new shifter. Now, you can take this apart from here and just change the shifter itself, which I should have done, but I wanna just go ahead and change the whole shifter itself. But you know how complicated I am. Now. From, from my point of view, like I was saying before, something in the front of this, probably that mechanism right there, if you can see it. If you can zoom in. I'm not zoom in. Oh. All right, that mechanism right there, I believe that it broke in the other one. I'm not too, not too entirely sure. Um, but I'm going ahead and changing out the whole shifter, so um, this wiring harness should just bolt up to the other one. I haven't I have no issues with the last one. So It should just bolt up um, Shifters should work and those wires we were talking about earlier that I was playing around with saying that you sh You should yank out. Yeah, don't do that because uh, look where they go. <laughs> so don't be doing that um, Now we got to get on the inside and take out the original shifter all right, so now you have the shifter that is loose. All you gotta do is take a flathead. Where's my flathead? Your flathead was sitting over here. What did you well, do? Well, you, you would take a flathead. I'm just gonna take the Phillip head. And you're gonna slightly, but gently. Well, you might need that flathead. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's why I'm already looking for it. No, no. Oh, no, Got it. no, never mind everyone. All right, so there's the boot that I was talking about under the car. Yeah, I got you. You just completely just slide this. All right. Slide this up and out. I look. There's your exhaust. There's your drive shaft. 
Oh, if you guys really wanted to, if you guys had a hard time getting the bolts off of your drive shaft, this would be an actually good idea to get to the top end of it too. All right, so you're gonna have to put this back in place, and you're gonna have to reconnect the um, the shifter uh, uh, harness. wiring harness. And you're just gonna slide it back in and sit it down. Now, now that you've got the shifter back in place, I'm putting this back on here. Yay. All right, now that you got the shifter back in place, I'm going to reconnect and you're going to bolt. Put this back in place first. Got it in. All right. Yeah, there you go. Sweet. All right, so that's how you get it back in. All right, so now that you have the shifter back up in place, you're going to bolt it. Bolt it down <laughs> while you got everything out of place. You're going to take your four bolts. You got one. You got two. I don't even know if that's going in. No, I'm going to have to do it myself. Hold on. Oh, you got to do everything yourself now, do you? Well, well, for this part, we're... Well, excuse me. There's some here. Alright, you got it? I don't know if it's lined up correctly. I don't care if it's lined up correctly. All it's going to do is just bolt back up to the transmission. You mean frame? Transmission. This part goes to the frame. Yeah. The arm goes to the transmission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need to pick up another car and grab my wrench. And while he's gone, wrench, ratchet, whatever you want to call it. Damn, he's back. Sorry, y'all. I can't show you all the shenanigans I was going to do. And I would do the X um, for this. Good boy. Well, it just gets easier and easier for you, doesn't it? You guys seeing this? He likes stirring up his own shit. <laughs> So, essentially everyone, we're about, I don't know. 75% done. Yeah, I was going to say 70. 70% uh, done, roughly. Uh, enough to where we have the shifter plugged in. It's hooked back up. We got the bolts going back up. Uh, as soon as uh, he goes back into the car, reconnects everything. Um, and before we actually connect all this back together, uh, we're going to test the shifter out. And uh, make sure everything works correctly as it should. And then we'll go through the hassle of, of doing all this shit. But, like I said, this guy has a lot of crap in this car, so there's wires fucking everywhere. And if you're wondering how to put the, um, The dash back on, well, the console part. All you gotta do is just slide it down so you get it up to the holes and then snap it down. It's pretty much plain and simple. Well, At least you'd expect it to be. I would expect it to be, yes. All right, so. You know, unless your car's 14 years old and doesn't want to cooperate, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm going for that last bolt.
gonna say, does that shifter feel right? <laughs> Look at the concentration in his face. <laughs> All right. Well, considering we're not hooked up the transmission right now. And it works. All right, so what I am going to do So I'm going to move this lever into the position it's supposed to be in. I put the lever in reverse. All right, now put it in part. Okay, that that was easier. That was easier than I expected it to be. Yeah, you throw the locking mechanism back on there, and you throw the nut back on there. Alright, so I'm going to lay y'all down real quick. I'm going to hold this, and I'm going to tighten this up. All right, it is 100% done. Yeah. Scott. Yo. Sorry, my bad, I was texting my wife. She's about to be off work soon, so. Tell her I have 3% on my phone. Anyways, yeah, so y'all, look at this. So we have park, reverse, neutral, drive, go over, we're in standard mode now. Drive, neutral, reverse park and this one well this one you still you still have to push up on it but this one actually works a hell of a lot better than our previous one because this one isn't broken <laughs> so i'm going to make sure it's in park like that i'm going to let off the brake let it lock in which now it's locked in i'm going to ease myself out of this car because this car is a good what seven inches no right ten inches off the ground yeah about about ten inches yeah gently do that and we're probably we're probably going to end up dissecting the shifter down here and figuring out what really went wrong with it and we may actually end up fixing it and selling it who knows this is what we're doing okay here show them show them what's going on all right so, so go and put it in standard mode when we go down into standard mode he's in standard mode right now it's just showing drive. On the plus side to all this guys, he's able to actually shift again, which is which is nice without having to, you know press down a button and all that mayhem. So yeah, that that was getting annoying. So at least we got that right, Bobby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now what I might do is unplug the battery and see if it's just stored codes for the transmission. It could be. It could um, very well be. If that doesn't work, then. Then we know it's something dealing with the, the transmission. I'm going to go ahead and unplug uh, the battery real quick. You better start praying to the car gods. Huh. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the uh, intake we were talking about. It's just plugged in right there and goes straight up to there. He got this off of another G. I got that off my OG, which came off the old 350. Yeah, I went I went to one of the junkyards and I was just I was just messing around in there, and all of a sudden I seen a black 350Z convertible in there, lowered coilovers, everything on it. So I was like, you know, I could take a couple of things from the 350. I opened the hood and actually seen the Spectre this. intake. I was actually surprised that it was you know it was in there, but I mean. I got there before anybody else got there to get the um, the intake, and I'm thinking about getting the coilovers from it. Um, they're just wanting a lot more money from it than what it's actually worth. So to um, put it to put it in the simple terms, if you go to a junkyard, 
you could run into some luck depending on what you're looking for you know but uh you know i mean, I mean that's the, that's just a little side note i wanted to show y'all the car barely been in there for maybe a couple of days so i wouldn't recommend without knowing where the car has been i wouldn't recommend putting a old filter from a junkyard on one of these cars unless you but clean it if you do clean it then it's better for the car um you know because you don't know how what time how much dust has got into it how much uh if they put any type of chemicals on it you i would clean it first if you're going to take one from the junkyard if you do end up taking one from the junkyard you know no. good luck to prove that theory even further i'm going to move over here my corolla out here actually has a high flow air filter in it probably by Spectre or KN. it's not you know it doesn't have the name brand on it but I got that one out of his junkyard and uh, it fits right into the stock box. It's not set up like this, but it fits into the stock box, uh, the OEM box that came with the car. And uh, believe it or not, oddly enough, that came out of a black 03 Corolla. And he got his out of a black 03 G35 no. or no Nissan 350Zs. It's so the same, same thing, different body style. Oh, they weren't far off. They really weren't. But nonetheless, I mean, it's it's a it's it's pretty scary how close they were to each other. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we all you know, I mean, both of us ran into luck at the junkyard, which is pretty nice. But uh, anyways, enough rambling. We're uh, gonna end up having to show the viewers uh, my old G35 sitting at one of our customers' house. Yeah, you yeah the one that yeah the one that didn't make it. They both don't have engines in it right now. <laughs> you guys, we took like all this is out of the car over at the other house, and it's just the bay. You'll just see the bay of of the G. It's and you'll see how much damage I did to the car, uh, just by easily just sliding it on the top. I mean, some guy ran me off the road, uh, ended up totaling my car, not getting no insurance money and nothing from it. Bought this three days later, and I've been loving it ever since. So. I mean, yeah, there's problems here and there with it. I mean, but it's with every car that you buy, uh, used. It's going to be problems here and there, here and there. Um, but other than that, I mean, this car is held up by, by Nissan pretty damn well. I mean, it's been through a couple of wrecks, I believe, but, you know. Um, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, but. <laughs> I mean, it still runs like a champ. I mean, there's no engine problems. There's no transmission problems, it as does. I know it, of. It runs like a brand new sewing machine. I will give it that for a 14 year old car. Now, in these cars, I would recommend getting an oil catch can. Um, they do consume oil like hell. Um, if you have one, make sure you check the oil every week because um, they these will run oil consumption down to the ground because. This car drinks about maybe a quart every two weeks. Yeah, she and, gets um, thirsty. Actually, there, there's better oil for it. You can get full synthetic or synthetic blend, uh, 10W30 or 10W40. I would recommend 10W30. Um, it's a lot thicker. Um, you can use it in the wintertime for thicker oil. Um, Sorry, correction, y'all. 1040 is actually thicker than 1030. Well... <laughs> I'm talking about 5W, which actually normally comes on, in the car standard. It's thicker than 5W30. Well, yeah. Um, that's what I was saying. It's a lot thicker than the original we, oil. We were in the 10 weight. Yeah. So, just. Now, uh, anyways. If you, want, if you want to go the 1040 route, you might have to change the gaskets and everything in it. Make sure nothing flows out like, like normally. Keep abusing your car there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just I'm just lightly tapping, which I, mean, I didn't on, go nowhere to this there on the plastic piece that's not connected. Ever. Um, but that I mean pretty much shows you how to how to change a um, shifter route from stock. I don't know why you did that, but uh, <laughs> that's that, that's how you change the shifter route from stock to anything you want to put into it. Um. Same thing goes for a uh, stick shift. You want to throw in a short shifter. Um, I mean, it's pretty much almost the same concept, except for you ain't got that long, long cable it goes from the shifter all the way up to the transmission. You just have it right, right there at the uh, the transmission, and um, just throw a short shifter on there. That's what I want to do with this. I want to throw a short shifter on there when I get the stick shift put in. Um, other than that, I mean, I ain't really got much to do. Um, this has been Fearless Mechanics. See you later. Hey!